When I was a wee lad, I didn't like to read, but at elementary school, we were required to read. We had these calendars we had to fill out where every day we would have to put the book we were reading for at least 30 minutes. I'm pretty sure my calendar had a Pokemon Platinum guidebook for at least five months. For me, reading the Pokemon Platinum guidebook was pretty similar to actually just playing the game. So I'd read the Pokemon Platinum guidebook at school and I would go home and do all the things I read about in game. Thankfully, something happened to my brain and I do like reading now, surprisingly. Reading the Pokemon Platinum guidebook forever put a seed in my brain for liking books with pictures and books about processes and gameplay. Thankfully, as a concept artist, I get to read tons of books with pictures in them. There's something unique about art books. They're harder to display than prints, but on the other hand, they have so much art in them that they often make up for being harder to display. Some art books are literal museums. Others are filled with information about how the art was made. But I've noticed a slight theme with art book videos, and it's that they usually only focus on one type of art book. It's usually like how-to art books. But I think there are three different types of art books. There's the how-to books, like how to draw. There are the process art books, which are a little bit more niche because they're specific to projects usually. And then there's inspirational books, which usually are just plain art books. Art really is a balancing game between being inspired, knowing what processes to do to come up with ideas, and having a good foundation to build your art upon. Welcome everyone, my name is Pierce. Feel free to grab your hot water beverage of choice and join me for this video. Today I'm drinking ginger snapfish. So let's get started. Bro, they always boil the water way too hot. The first type of book to cover, art fundamental books. I got three today, these three here, and I will cover them starting with this one. This is How to Draw by Scott Robertson and Thomas Bertling. I read this book before I took any classes on perspective. And I kid you not, this book taught me everything I know about perspective. I think I only got halfway through it too. So there's definitely a lot more. Yeah, there's Pokemon cards where I stopped. There's definitely a lot more in here that I still have yet to learn. Thing about perspective is that it's largely a very logical thing. You know that if you put the line here and here, it's gonna make it look like it's in perspective like it's 3D. You mess it up a little bit, it's gonna look off and it's pretty easy fix to figure out where to put the line if you know all the rules of perspective. But it does get pretty confusing, which is why this book is super helpful because it really delves into the, honestly, mathematics of how to build things in on 2D paper, but make it look 3D. This is the stuff that's really helpful. Figuring out how to draw the shapes. If you haven't learned perspective yet, I would highly recommend this book. And if you still have a learned perspective, I would still recommend this book on the basis of just brushing up on fundamentals without having to take another perspective class. That's one. The second book I got is a book that is really well known in the art community and it's by the legend himself, James Gurney. My art education was great. I love my faculty, but the one thing that was kind of overlooked was painting. Painting was one of those things that at my school at least was kind of just expected you would pick up by yourself as you took classes on like figure painting and illustration. For me, I never picked it up until I started researching it on my own. The thing about perspective is it's a lot like math. One plus one equals two, two plus two equals four. The thing that I've noticed about painting and light and color is it's a lot less like math and a lot more like language. I put something in my script here that I think is pretty good. For example, in English, you have the words read, 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 and read. Not logical at all. Like what is going on here? But in context, it makes sense. So for example, if I said, I read a red book, but I'm reading a book about reads, you'd probably be able to figure out what the heck I was saying. And painting is a little like that. You need context in order to figure out how to paint. And this book really goes into the context of like, oh, this is the context of edge lighting and where it's applicable and what sort of scenarios it appears in and how to paint it and frontal lighting. What does frontal lighting look like and what specific scenarios does that appear in? It is a fantastic book and James Gurney is one of those guys that 
you could just talk to for hours because he's so friendly. So honestly, highly recommend a book from a man who's super kind and very skilled. Like, this man is just a crazy painter. As a younger artist, I had no idea how to do anatomy. Like painting, it's kind of one of those intuitive things because you have so much squash and stretch, but then you need internal structures in order for it to still look right. There's a lot of anatomy books out there. I, I will say that. This is the one I happened to pick up and it did help me quite a bit just by guiding you through like, oh, here's how you do gesture. You think about the lines. Then you need to start thinking about the structure. So that way you still have movement from the gesture, but it looks like an actual human instead of just some weird abstract picture. It really breaks down where the bones go, especially the bone points that stick out. It goes into where the muscles go, where the jaws go, how to draw the figure in different mediums. This was probably the most helpful part where it goes into the muscles and how the muscles stretch. Like if the person's raising up their arm, this kind of trapezoidal shape will turn into a triangle shape. Like, okay, but yeah, there's a lot of anatomy books out there. I don't think you can go wrong with any one of them. I just chose this one. All right, we're on to the second type of books. So the process how-to books. The first one I have is Hayao Miyazaki. That's literally what it's called. If you've been watching my content for a while, you know I'm a Hayao Miyazaki nerd. Maybe it's his brutish nature contrasted by the very optimistic kind of quirky content he makes. Maybe it's just because his art resonates a lot with me. But this these types of books are books about process. How are artists coming up with their ideas? How are they creating these amazing pieces of art? This book dives into Hayao Miyazaki, who he is, his life, and how he came up with his ideas from the initial sketches all the way to final films and storyboarding and also dives a lot into how he thinks about the creation process. Like here, you will find yourself identifying with the various characters' emotions with their anger, joy, and gentleness. Their emotions will become yours. And as is often said, you will become both an animator and an actor. Yeah, I would recommend this book if you're a Miyazaki fan. It is a gold mine. This second book is probably my favorite art book of all time, just because I love the artist and I love the games he makes. It's a game dev book. It delves into indie game mechanics and how an indie game is made. If you don't know, Bryce Coe is the dude who worked on Sea of Stars, and he also made a Aegis Defenders, which is this game, The Art of Aegis Defenders, or Aegis. Unfortunately, this book was a limited release, so I don't know if you can buy it on Amazon, but you should be able to find copies on eBay. But this book delves into how pixel art was made, how designs were made for different characters, and then it delves into the entire creation process. I, especially early on, I think these sketches are probably some of the most insightful because you have the very beginnings of Aegis Defenders, and then it goes through the preliminary stages and talks about how it came to be the modern game we know it to be today. Again, the whole thing with these books is you're trying to learn how do these artists come up with their ideas. You can have a good art foundation where you can make good, accurate art, but until you have a good process to start coming up with good ideas that haven't been thought of before, this is where books like this really become helpful because they let you get an inside look on the thought process behind some amazing artists. I don't have a copy of this book because it's damn expensive, but Edgar Payne's Composition of Outdoor Painting is the industry standard for concept artists for creating environment designs. You can find this book on the Internet Archives, which I will link below, and it gives really a lot of insight into Edgar Payne's approach to the philosophy of art, as well as his approach to the painting process behind compositions. Now, if you don't want to read this book, it is kind of long and arduous because it does use a lot of philosophical terms and it's a bit wordy. If you just look up Edgar Payne composition on Google, you'll find these little sketches that will give you the majority of the information you need just without the context of how they should be used. Now on to the inspirational books. The thing about inspirational books is it's a lot more of a feeling than it is logical. But the reason that inspirational books should be used is because oftentimes the most inspiring art is extremely cohesive and extremely well put together. 
as is the case with Lord of the Rings, the movie trilogy from early 2000s. Now this is Sketches from Bag End to Mortar, a Middle Earth Traveler by John Howe. John Howe was one of the concept artists on the Lord of the Rings movies and is the person behind a lot of the visual cohesion. Now, I'm an absolute nerd for Lord of the Rings, so it kind of makes sense that I'm really drawn to these early concept sketches. There's not a lot of process here. It's mainly lore coupled by concept art that is really old, by the way, because it's before digital, so everything's done by hand. But as you can see, it really is like some phenomenal work. Just this John Howe's illustrations tell so much and are so inspiring because they evoke so much emotion and just these simple pictures. Like, look at this. Wouldn't you want to visit there? I'm pretty sure this is Dale. Yeah, the city of Dale. Because inspirational books are a lot more of a feeling than logical, these books are a lot more of a show and tell for me because you might be inspired by completely different things than I. Just like as a kid, I probably would not have been drawn to these books as much as the Pokemon Platinum guidebook. Because for me as a kid, Pokemon Platinum was the inspirational thing for me. The key is to find work that makes you go, I want to make something like that. I want to create art that is evoking these emotions in me. Once you find that, that's when you know you found something that's worthwhile do, exploring. And that's when you begin taking work like this and dissecting it, asking, what did the artist do here to create the emotions around these? These spiky shapes are making it look scary and this creature, it's a goblin, but it almost looks like a spear with its head. I wonder why he thought of that and did it that way. And then you can ask questions like, what can I do to take inspiration from this and apply it to my own art? On that note, book two. This is the art of Tyler Jacobson. Not only is Tyler Jacobson another one of those really wonderful people to talk to, just like James Gurney, but his art is absurd. He is known for doing the D&D covers as well as doing an absurd amount of magic cards. And his art is so emotive, it almost feels like it comes alive. Now, I'm not an illustrator. I am a concept artist. I guess I am an illustrator. I do illustration works from time to time. The thing that you wanna gain from inspirational books like this is looking for the books that give you the emotions. And this is one of those books that gives me the emotions. Like even these portraits, like they're so emotive, so much emotion in these, in these subtle expressions. And Tyler also does concept artwork. So let me see if I can actually find that in here. Yeah, this is some concept artwork. So he was doing some thumbnails that he then turned into these character designs here. And finally, the last book. I've talked about this before on my channel. Hayao Miyazaki's Mask of the Valley of the Wind. This is a manga actually, but it's so beautiful. I literally just consider them art books. I got the two pack of the big books, but this ultimately is just like a massive storyboard for one of Miyazaki's animations. I mean, I think they literally used the manga as a base for the movie Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which is a shorter version of the manga, by the way. It's not the complete story, but just seeing like the designs and how the characters emote and seeing like how is the landscape made and how is the architecture made and, and how is the plant life made? What is he thinking when he puts down these individual lines for cross hatching? What emotions is he trying to evoke with every line? So with all of these books, we are trying to do three important things. One, learn the fundamentals to lay the foundation for our two process so as to create amazing ideas that we can three gain through inspiration of our favorite artists. You need all three to make truly amazing art. Sure, you can have good foundations, but your art will never be complete with just foundations. You need a process to ensure that you're consistently building good ideas, and then you need to constantly feed that process with inspiration. The fundamentals are the rock on which to build the tower of art. The tower is built through process and inspiration. Thank you for watching this video and thank you to my patrons, which I currently don't have any yet. So if you want to support me, link in the description. If you like this video, consider commenting your thoughts on why, or if you didn't like it, consider commenting why, so I can interact with you. All the books are linked in the description as well as the internet archive links to if they exist. 
So feel free to check those out also. Peace, and I'll see you soon, friends. I'm gonna slide out of here.